You know, it's nice to be a part of a system that is responsible for doing good things, and that's educating our children. And the ability to lead that system, to me, was and always will be an honor. Uh, to be in that position. And you know, I think back, especially when I was down in Barbados, to my grandparents and uh, their desire to, I guess, move to improve themselves, to be a part of the American dream. And I'm just a byproduct of their dreams and my parents' dreams. And then what I try to do is represent myself properly in public, knowing that uh, there are students out there who may not know me, but I want to make sure that uh, they see me as much as possible and see someone who respects them and uh, has, I guess, a vision as far as what they can achieve as well. You had a budget that is bigger than several Caribbean countries, entire budgets put together to, to, to manage. That, that couldn't have been the easiest thing to do, was it? As I said, hundreds, a uh, hundred plus thousand uh, teachers, over a million students in the public school system, couldn't have been easy. Well, it's interesting. It's made easier by having a great boss like I did, Mayor Bloomberg, but also having great staff. And so having outstanding people who you work with makes the job a lot easier. And people who committed to uh, the improvement of education. And so I was very lucky uh, to be a part of a team that was very dedicated to educational outcomes, equity in education, and then being a person who reported to an individual who both respected your work but also allowed you to be uh, free in doing your job. And having somebody as smart as Mayor Bloomberg it allowed us to really try to achieve things that were never imagined before. So I think all those things combined really made it worthwhile to be in that type of job, to have those type of responsibilities. And, but you, you did have some major challenges along the way in this three years or so that you were, didn't you? To put it mildly, I mean, anytime you're talking about a system of 1,800 schools, a $24 billion budget, 135,000 staff, 1.1 million students, uh, unions you're dealing with, parents who want the best for their children, there's always a number of issues that are facing you that you have to confront. And I think part of management is making sure you don't allow those issues to just go by the wayside or delay decision making. And I think one of the other things in being in leadership positions, whether it's as chancellor, whether it's mayor, whether it's a prime minister of Barbados or minister of education, uh, there are always going to be people unhappy with you. And you have to make sure that you're able to deal with that, but also be respectful in how you manage that. And so as long as you have that type of mindset and you're satisfied with yourself as far as the policies you're putting forward, that allows you the ability to move forward to try to do what's best for uh, your children and your students. And, and what do you think with, with all of these, and, and we will touch Hurricane Sandy soon, but with all of these, that you were able to to realize some level of success, didn't you? Oh, we achieved a lot of success, not just some level. I mean, our goal was to improve the graduation rates and graduation rates while we were in office went up by 43 percent. Dropout rates went down by over 50 percent. The number of uh, students of color graduating increased uh, by over 40 percent. Uh, we are able to expand the number of advanced placement course, courses for students, especially students of color. We created a number of new initiatives uh, to make sure that students were in better schools, uh, trained teachers, trained principals. So we were able to accomplish a lot, but that's not to say there's still a lot more to do as well. And then there was Hurricane Sandy. That really well, that was a major challenge. Yeah. That, that, that was a major challenge because with the disruption of Hurricane Sandy, we had to relocate, uh, if I remember correctly, the number over 70,000 students based on schools being damaged. And when you're talking about relocating students to another school in a very short period of time, that's larger than most school districts in the country. And so, again, as a result of a great staff, a great team in place, we were able to do that wasn't always easy, but our responsibility was to make sure that it worked. And at the end of the day, I think for the most part, it worked very well. You, you're delivering the motivational speech at the colloquium for the future leaders of, of the Caribbean in various ways. 
what is it will you share with them that will energize them? Well, I, I think for me, the goal of doing something that makes you happy and satisfied. Uh, if you're not satisfied with yourself and the job that you're doing, then you're going to be very unhappy in the long run. And then that translates to the people that you're working on behalf. And I think we have a responsibility as individuals and as a group of individuals to support each other, to mentor each other. And it doesn't even have to be in-person mentoring, mentoring by observing and how we really move forward and really building off the strengths of others. So that's one of the things I will share. And I think the other thing is always making sure you find different ways to give back. Uh, and making sure you have the respect for individuals and how you get back. I practice something very simple, uh, and I try to do it every day in that I always make sure I say hello to people, strangers on the street, doesn't matter. Just a simple hello, and sometimes it catches people by surprise, but it shows respect. Uh, a lot of times up here in New York, you know, they're handing out the papers on the streets and the people just hardworking, handing out papers. And I see people brusquely walking by them, not giving them eye contact. And even though I may not take a paper, I will always say, no, thank you. Good morning. Have a good day. And to me, it's about respect how you respect individuals, how you make sure that individuals understand what you're about. And conveying that, especially for leadership positions, I think is extremely important. Uh, there will be in, in, in the rooms a number of students who are probably uncertain as to which direction to go, what they want to do. Was there a period when you were uncertain uh, yourself, where you wanted to go, and how did you manage to reconcile that's a great question. I mean, while it may not have been clear in every job that I wanted to achieve or know beforehand where I wanted to go from a job perspective, I did know where I wanted to be from a career perspective. And those are two totally different things. And every job that I have had has always involved community service. So whether it's a kindergarten teacher, whether it's working in foster care, adoption, working for an organization that carries out grants to not-for-profit organizations, or being deputy mayor, being the head of the Urban League, and, and the last job I had, a uh, full-time job, was chancellor. Every one of those jobs involved community service to some perspective. And so to me, even if you're not clear as far as the exact job, having a sense of what will make you happy and satisfied. And to me, that's extremely important. And the other thing that I've always tried to follow uh, is not allowing money to be your sole guide. While money is important, salary is important, I know many people who are very unhappy who are making a lot of money. Uh, not unhappy in making the money, but unhappy with the job itself. And so you can't allow money to be your decision maker as far as taking a job that may make you unhappy in the long run, which causes more pain and anxiety uh, if you're not satisfied. Uh, of course, you've, you've been involved, certainly as Deputy Mayor, in, in Caribbean Week. You've been there uh, over the years for Caribbean Week. Your thoughts with the CTO coming to New York for Caribbean Week? Always excited when CTO comes to New York for Caribbean Week. I mean, to me, it's a wide array of uh, workshops, forums, how they reach out to different individuals to make sure that uh, folks are engaged in what uh, the different countries in the Caribbean represent and having people become more knowledgeable about that as well. And so to me, it's always an exciting time. And then, quite frankly, I remember the first time I got involved, um, and I remember the uh, dinner with the pageant or the walk of the flags of the different countries, and to me that was exciting. That's always stood out in my mind. So I think there's something for everyone to participate in, and to me it's always an opportunity to meet new people as well.